If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. In this episode, we are taking a close look at So Delight Genuine by Daniel Smith. It is a non-sparkly cousin of the Kyanite Genuine from the previous episode. It is a warm, muted blue with lots of granulation. Sodalite was first discovered in 1811 in Greenland and it became popular as an ornamental stone and in 1891 when a large deposit was discovered in Ontario, Canada. Sodalite is a light, relatively hard yet fragile mineral. Sodalite is named after its sodium content. It is most commonly a blue colour, but it does also come in grey, yellow, green and pink. The blue in the blue sodalite are more of a royal blue than an ultramarine blue. Daniel Smith's, web Daniel Smith's website says, Sodalite, with a distinctive deep blue colour, is one of the components of lapis lazuli and very rare. Daniel Smith's sodalite is the finest quality and the deepest blue that comes from Greenland and the flanks of Italy's Mount Vesuvius. In watercolour, the inky colour of this semi-precious stone granulates as it dries, layering a blue-black texture surface on a smooth blue-grey undertone. Low staining, light fast and semi-transparent, soda light creates a three-dimensional quality as it dries. It is a series four color. It is classified as excellent in light fastness, semi-transparent, low staining and granulating. We are back. This is soda light genuine and it is a lovely, lovely deep inky color that is super granulating. There is no shimmer to the soda light genuine itself. If you do see any sparkles, that might be leftovers from the previous episode's color of kyanite genuine. So I'm sorry if that causes any confusion, but there is no sparkle or shimmer in soda light genuine itself. If you did love the kyanite genuine's color, but you're not really into the shimmer and sparkles, then Soda Light Genuine is actually a perfect replacement for that colour because you get all that inky blue colour that's even deeper, as you see here, than the Kyanite with none of the glitz and glamour. In terms of creating gradated washes, they are relatively easy to do the gradated washes. The only one I had a problem with was the Bockingford Hot Press 300 GSM, but I do create these gradated washes with a lot less care than I would in the final piece, just so that you can see how good or how bad a color is at cauliflowering. So I would say this is a pretty good color to do a gradated washes with, and you're gonna have a pretty easy time. In terms of opacity, this is classified as semi-transparent, but I would actually say it is transparent. I don't see any deposit apart from like a couple of sparkles that was left over from the kyanite on the brush, but I don't really see it much deposit. However, the flocculation you get in sodalite is pretty close to dark, almost black color anyway, so we wouldn't be seeing much on the black line. In terms of lifting, it is pretty easy to lift up the colour, but you will still get some staining, and indeed Daniel Smith calls this a low staining colour as opposed to a non-staining colour, and I would agree with that. In terms of glazing, it doesn't create very pretty glazes, so I wouldn't bother designing something that contains many, many layers of soda like Genuine. Gauzing, it does very well because it is such a heavily granulating colour and indeed you do get almost navy black to black linear patterns using the gauze. I wouldn't bother using salt on this colour because it doesn't really react much. However, it did react pretty well to the water blooms. You get a lot of feathering out of the water blooms, almost like fireworks. However, it doesn't result in a very pretty pattern. In terms of colour mixes, let's just remind you what colours I mixed it soda light with. So these are the 12 colours I mixed the soda light with and these are the results of that. 
because of the navy blue granulation it doesn't have very pretty results up here in the yellows through to the oranges however when you come down to the pinks the violets and the blues and greens I really like the colors that result from it and in fact when I'm looking at the bottom two lines I feel like it is the blue version of the transparent red oxide by Daniel Smith in that it creates this really nice muted palette of gorgeous colors now let's take now let's take a look at how sodalite compares with other colors I've lined up a few similar colors that I have and I really really wish again that I had Daniel Smith Indigo but I don't have it so I'm sorry that it's not in this comparison so in this test I tested Kyanite Genuine, Mayan Dark Blue, Payne's Blue Grey, Luna Blue, Holbein Indigo, Daniel Smith's Indanthrone Blue and Sennelier Indigo. As you can see, the kyanite that we saw in the last episode sparkles away, whereas the sodalite stays pretty matte. In terms of hue, I think it is between these two colors, the Payne's Blue-Gray and the Mayan Dark Blue. The indigos seems too green compared to the sodalite genuine. The sodalite genuine is definitely of a much cooler hue. And the Luna Blue just have too much green in here so i would say that these three colors are the closest in hue but of course the kyanite has so much sparkle and if you don't like the sparkle then it's not really an option so yeah i would say mixing these two if you already have these two colors will be a good replacement for the sodalite. However, I would say it is an excellent color to have on your palette. It's heavily granulating, so you're gonna have lots and lots of fun playing with that granulation. And it is a nice inky navy color that is cooler than indigo and a lot more muted than the indanthro. And so I can totally see it being useful for shadows and the watered down color here will be excellent for stormy skies. So that was So Delight Genuine. What did you think of this color? Me personally, I'm a big fan of this color. It has a huge range in value from really, really deep, dark navy blue to very light, stormy color. And so it would actually be a great choice as a granulating color for a monochromatic piece. I already owned this color before we started this series and I've always been a big fan of this color so it gets a big thumbs up from me. I think it's a great practical color to have from the Primatec range. It's not fancy, it's not sparkly like the other colors but in terms of real uses in watercolor colors that are you actually going to use from the Primatec range, I think Sodalite Genuine is a good candidate for that. So how about you? Do you think you would like to have this as part of your palette? If you already have this color on your palette, do let us know in the comments down below how you use this color. If you enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up and do let me know in the comments down below what you think of this color. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!